Yo, what's up? Welcome back. Today, I'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit about what camera gear I use to do most of my video projects. And these days, most of my shoots are pretty much for outdoor brands. So a lot of the times we're going hiking or we're going out into the outdoors or going somewhere pretty remote. So I usually try and keep my kit pretty light and pretty nimble so I can be moving. I can unpack it really quick, put it together. So my camera kit is pretty light and that's kind of how I like it. So this is just kind of a, a little breakdown talking about kind of the video gear that I use to create and shoot most of my videos. To start, we've got an a7S III. This is a Sony body. One of the main reasons that I went with this camera was because I wanted to be able to shoot video and photo using the same lenses. It just makes that process really easy. And when I go on shoots, I can bring both bodies and I can just swap lenses really quick and have video or photo if I want. So that's kind of why I went with this body. Usually if I'm shooting video, I'll shoot with this Sony G Master 24 to 70 2.8. And usually this is my go-to lens for most projects. If there's a specific look that I'm going for or need, I'll just rent a lens. But this is kind of the go-to lens that I use for most of my projects. And I have this small rig cage on the camera, which I would recommend getting a cage on your camera just because it allows you to mount a lot of other pieces to the camera and kind of build it out. And one thing I like about it is it actually has this little like tool that you can pop out and it's like a little flathead and you can take the cage off, you can tighten different parts and it just comes in handy for a lot of stuff when you have to screw things in. So that was the main reason I liked this. So yeah, now we'll just kind of go through as I build out this camera to usually what my setup is when I'm shooting. So this is kind of how the setup looks a lot of the time, but there's one last piece of gear that is really crucial for shooting video. And that is a matte box. So what a matte box is, is it allows you to put ND filters on your camera. The thing that's super important when you're shooting video is having the correct settings on your camera. A lot of the time what I'm shooting is usually at 24 frames per second, which is basically like normal what you see normally, like most movies are shot in 24 frames per second. It's really important to have the correct shutter speed or shutter angle that goes with that frame rate. So if I'm shooting at 24 frames per second, I wanna have my shutter speed be double that. And so in this case on the Sony, the closest it will get to is 150th. So I'll set my shutter speed to 150th and have my frame rate at 24 frames per second. What can happen sometimes is if you wanna shoot at a shallower depth of field, and you have that same frame rate and shutter speed, it'll oftentimes be really bright or the image will kind of be blown out and you can't reduce the ISO anymore. So that's where you need a matte box. So I have this little matte box I got from Tilta and I like this. It just basically screws right on here. There's a little thing on the side, you just screw it in. And that's pretty much what my rig looks like most of the time. And it's really solid, you can shake it around a lot. One thing in particular that I like about handheld is it just allows you a lot more creativity and freedom in my opinion. When you're locked off on a gimbal or on a tripod, it can be kind of hard to move around and oftentimes that can kind of be limiting or even like you just miss the shot because you're like locked off on the tripod or you're on a gimbal and you can't get it you know, ready or set up fast enough. So a lot of the stuff I'm shooting is pretty run and gun, meaning I'm having to quickly shoot or capture something as it happens one or two times. So that's kind of the setup I have. Just to go over a couple other things I really like about the Sony a7S III body. One thing is it has two memory slots on the side. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but this is really nice. You can record to two cards. You can have one record all your footage, another card as a backup, or you can record one and then proxy to the other card. Another thing I really like about this is also, it has a little tilt out back screen, and I've just found this is really helpful. It's also a touch screen, which just allows you to kind of fly through the menus, and it has three custom buttons on this dial mode up here, which allow you to save your settings. So. Oftentimes for me, what I'm saving is one setting at 24 frames per second and one setting at 60 frames per second. This allows me to toggle back and forth between 
regular speed and slow motion really easily. And this comes in handy, especially when you're shooting a lot of like action sports, you can kind of switch between both. So that's a reason that I really like this. The Sony system has excellent autofocus, which for me is awesome because if you're shooting video and you can just tap on someone's face and it will lock on or tap onto a moving object, it will just lock onto that focus and then you don't have to worry about trying to manually pull focus with a focus ring or even having to follow focus. You can just use the autofocus to do that and I've had pretty good success using that autofocus to track for videos, so that's one feature that I use quite a bit. Another thing, just like the Sony a7R 3 it has an auto eye detection. So you can just lock onto someone's eye while you're shooting them. And this is really nice when you're shooting interviews because that way you can just lock onto their eye, capture that video, know with confidence that you're getting the, the shot in focus. And it's just a really important feature for me, one that I use quite a bit. Just a couple other specs I really like are the different picture profiles that this camera has. It has an S-Log3 profile, which gives you a really maximum amount of dynamic range and it allows you to really push all the colors and have a lot of control in post when you're doing your color grading and that's where you're gonna get just a really beautiful image with a lot of colors popping. So I use S-Log3 on a decent amount of shoots for quite a bit of projects, but it's a pretty hard profile to learn how to grade, so I would recommend checking out some other videos. This camera has a ton of other picture profiles that you can use. Another one that I find myself using a lot is the Cinetone profile. This is awesome. It really doesn't require much grading, and this is what I shoot a ton of projects in. This is pretty much my go-to setup that I use for most of my outdoor projects, and yeah, if you guys have any comments or questions, just drop those in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Next week, I'll talk to you guys a little bit more about my gimbal setup and kind of how I use that for different shoots and why I think it's beneficial. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next week. See ya.